sometimes it scares me to, to, to really find out what happened, to really know the facts. And I don't know if I could handle it or I don't know if I'd want to know. into, I don't know what. Just nobody on South Street saw anything. Nobody uh, along the highway saw anything. Answer, and we don't get justice. It's just agony. It's just agony. I'm confident that it was a murder, that there was foul play. I just can't understand who would want to hurt her. I think a lot of people out there know. Do you believe, as Christine said, that yeah. people know? Mm -hmm. Yes. Somebody knows, or you think? People know. I've never questioned that for a day. He would have never, ever, ever left me. There is nothing in my sister's past that would cause her to disappear off the face of the earth. She was just a really kind, sweet woman. And for the life of me, I can't understand how there could be such evil out there to want to destroy something so beautiful. Is he still somebody you're looking at? Uh, I'm not, I'm, I haven't closed anybody out. We have a solid direction. Um, we have uh, a lot of information. Um, I might have the that silver bullet or that golden nugget. So new information, solid leads. That's what the FBI is saying. It feels like we've been tasked with telling people something that they should act on. Imbo and Patron, in the city of Philadelphia, everybody knows this case. And the FBI is saying they believe somebody, not just somebody, but people know what happened. People know what happened. Saturday, right, uh, so February 19th, it was, it was a cold day, very, very cold day. It was unseasonably cold. This was that busy bar, Abilene's. Today, it's a vacant Thai restaurant. On a Saturday night in 2005, South Street would have been packed with people. Imbo and Patron left the bar, stepped out onto South Street, and disappeared into thin air. He loved sports, football, Chicago Bears. He loved the Flyers, and music. He loved music. He loved rock concerts, went to a million concerts. He worked there every single day. He loved, you know, being with his mother and father every day. Um, some of my best memories were him at the bakery. He was a very hard worker. I grew up with Danielle. She was my best friend. She was great. She was a singer, she loved music, they had a lot in common like that. It's like the nicest person I've ever known. She would walk into a room and make everyone feel like they were the only person in the room. Just one of those people that never had an enemy, always was loved by everyone. She followed after my father.
He was a kind of a local celebrity, a singer in the 50s in South Philadelphia, and that was her passion. She loved to sing. So she joined a, a local band and sang on weekends. At that time when she was going through the divorce with Joe, you talked about that a little bit, right? Her and I? Yeah. Every day. And what were those conversations like? I mean, I don't really want to say. It, it, was, it was hard. She had a lot of struggles with it because of her son. He was little. I mean, he was, I don't even think he was two at the time. Um, so I think she had a lot of struggles with her decisions because of him. Because of him. Going through this divorce was, was horrible for her. She was down to 85 pounds, chain smoking, wasn't sleeping. Um, she was a shell of herself. I mean, they, they knew each other forever, so it wasn't like, I just think it, they just started, you know, talking again and My dad was a great father. For a long time, he raised me by himself, um, picked me up from school every day, took me to the park. Danielle was really the first girl that he really fell in love with and, you know, really wanted to dedicate his time to. And I was getting a little bit older, so I feel like he felt like, it okay. yeah, it was okay. So it was his weekend, and he went out to a family gathering out in Tom's River. We were at Chicken Pete's in South Philly, and he was at the tap room near his apartment. So when we left dinner, I dropped her off to him at the bar. How did that happen? How did they? They were talking I, I, through our dinner. I, I don't know. I was going back to New Jersey. I had work the next day. So I spoke to them. A few hours later, my brother wanted me to come back and go out with them and come back. We're going to a bar, and I was like, no, I'm already in Jersey. I'm not going to come back. And she got on the phone. I talked to both of them, and that's how I knew where they were going. Otherwise, I don't think anyone would have known where they were going. So it was a spur of the moment. It was a spur of the moment, which makes all of this even so strange. They left the bar, you know, happy. No situations, no incidents. Uh, nothing that we uncovered indicated any kind of altercation or anything at Abilene's. That February night was very, very cold. In fact, Patron boasted to a friend inside the bar that he found a parking spot close by, but nobody knows where that parking spot was. And to this day, nobody's come forward to say they saw the couple getting into Patron's truck or anything else out of the ordinary. That was the last anybody ever saw or heard of, you know, uh, you know Rich Patron, Daniel, you know, Imbo, uh, or the truck. They just disappeared. They just disappeared. I called her mom. Um, she hadn't heard from her. My mom hadn't, couldn't get my brother. My mother had called me and said, no one's heard from Danielle. She missed her haircut appointment with Christine. And Marge has been trying to contact Richard. It's going right to voicemail. When Joe came to the house with the baby, he, had, he was surprised to see me and my mother and a couple other people answer the door, and Danielle wasn't there. And he had asked where Danielle was, and I had made something up quickly. I, I think I said something along the lines of, oh, she's out with Christine, and she asked us to be here for her. I didn't know what to do at that point. I didn't know, I honestly didn't know where she was. At that point, I didn't think there had been any type of foul play. I was just trying to cover up for it. I, I knew by that night, I thought I'm never going to see them again. Like, what made you so sure? Just because I, that's what I thought. 
Because it was so out of character for both? So out of character and yeah, I'm not going to say why I thought it, but I kind of knew. A 3,000 pound truck and two individuals do not simply disappear without a trace. 363 days ago, Danielle Imbo and Richard Patron Jr. left South Street and then vanished. But to keep the mystery surrounding their disappearance in the public's eye. The FBI and half a dozen state and local law enforcement agencies have been pursuing this case. But the FBI said today that this is by no means a cold case. They and the truck disappeared without a trace. The 13th anniversary of the disappearance of her son Richard and his girlfriend Danielle Imbo. Her, her son needs her. Richard's daughter needs him. And we're just begging for anyone, for any information, please. Please. All of our lives have been taken from us. And we don't know now how to live each day without them, without knowing where they are, without knowing what happened to them. Um, I had family members that were Camden police officers that were at the scene, and they had called me from there, explaining that I'm here, it's not the truck, I'm here with the owner, it's a Dodge Ram, it's not a Dodge Dakota. I, I found nothing in, in either of their past that, um, that, that would have warranted, you know, what happened, them disappearing. Absolutely nothing on either one of them. They weren't involved Rich, in anything. Rich was a, a, a knock-around guy, um, hard-working, uh, raising his daughter. Danielle, same thing. Talk about Joe Imbo, and um, he did take a polygraph at the time. Is he still somebody you're looking at? Uh, I'm not, I'm, I haven't closed anybody out. Um, I haven't dis, um, discounted you know, anybody. I can't until you know, I got the uh, definitive uh, details, evidence, and information that I need to say this is what happened. I think we did um, show that Joe Imbo um, was not in Philadelphia or, or Mount Laurel based on the information available you know, at the time. Um, that he was, in fact, out in Tom's River. Um, so he had an alibi. So he had, yeah, he had an alibi. He had a, a, an alibi for where he was, yes. Was there a note? There was. Did it mention Imbo or Patron? Nope. That was a rumor that came out. Yeah. Anthony Rodesky. Okay. Um, March and April of that very same year, he was convicted of killing. Killed a couple of folks, yeah. right. Um, have, was he somebody who was looked at? Absolutely. And it was a couple of months after February 19th. Um, and we went through his home uh, on a number, a couple of occasions. He was, is, or a person of interest, mm -hmm. um, and we did the proper, you know, follow up. Uh, and again, I haven't ruled out anybody. Could just be random, yeah. but to be random and to get rid of two bodies and a truck. Right. It's pretty hard to do. Not impossible, but pretty hard to do. Around that time, there was a lot of car theft. Car theft, chop shops. Right. You know, you got a shredder. You know, in South Philly, that's shredding cars. There's all kinds of ways to get right. to get rid of trucks with people who know how to get rid of them. Right. But for a random crime to have occurred, you'd have to have somebody who knows how to make that happen and has those connections, which is possible.
I don't think there'll ever really be closure until we know what happened and we can bring her home and say goodbye the right way. On the 10th year, we put something on my father's uh, stone at the cemetery uh, in memory of my sister. We, we had a rose put there because that was her nickname. Everybody called her Rose. I know that my father loved me more than anything. He would have never left me. Danielle would have never left his son. All we need is that little piece of information that could glue everything together so we can get justice and, you know, someone can pay for what they did to our family. A case like this uh, will, will be solved you know, you know, by somebody in, in jail, somebody who wants to, you know, for an example, somebody in jail who wants to uh, either clear their conscience, you know, before they, they meet their maker, or, uh, you know, has some specific information that they can, you know, call in. This is still a very, uh, very much in, in the uh, interest of the FBI to bring closure to this. If you've ever had that feeling that something's wrong, something's just not right, I think everybody has that once in their life. If there's something, just something doesn't feel right. We have that feeling from the time we wake up to the time I go to bed every day. It tears, it, it really tears you up inside not knowing what happened to someone so beautiful as Danielle. It's just not the same without her.